Tonight we get to induct three alumni into the Alumni Hall of Fame. These come from nominations uh, that come from across the school community. We really get a whole series of very remarkable alumni nominated and then the top choices among them. Uh, the first two will be done together because their work and lives are intertwined. Dr. Eva Smith and Dr. Emmett Chase were nominated together because of their concentrated and coordinated dedication to confronting issues of access to care in their community. Dr. Smith and Dr. Chase have spent the last 16 years working to address the health needs of the Hoopa Valley Reservation in Northern California. In 1997, Dr. Emmett Chase worked with the tribal chairman for the Hoopa Valley to open the only medical center within 60 miles. I just want to pause there as a reminder of the fact that in the United States, how crucial this is, the underserved communities that have that far still to go to health care. Dr. Chase, the medical center's founding director, served for nine years as CEO of the Kemal Medical Center and continues today as a staff physician. Dr. Chase has served as president of the Association of American Indian Physicians and as director of the AIDS program of the Indian Health Service. Dr. Eva Smith, a family physician, has led numerous efforts on the prevention and treatment of substance abuse, including serving as medical advisor to the Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Program branch in the Indian Health Service headquarters. While with the Indian Health Service, Dr. Smith played a pivotal role in the implementation of public law 99570, which more than doubled the Alcoholism and Substance Abuse budget and provide for the development of adolescent treatment centers. Dr. Smith became medical director of the Kemal Medical Center soon after its doors opened and remains in that role today. Dr. Smith earned her Master's of Public Health in Epidemiology in 1990. Dr. Chase earned his Master of Public Health in Community Health Sciences in 1990. You can see why we are so thrilled and honored to have them as alumni and so delighted to honor your incredibly remarkable work today, as well as to welcome your children back to the school here with you. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's um, an honor to be back. Um, we had a daughter that was born here 25 years ago, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we waddled here in um, 1988, and um, three weeks after we started school here, um, our daughter, one of our daughters was born. Uh, we are joined here today by um, our oldest daughter and her um, husband and grandchildren, so we now have a very um, fine family of five children and seven grandchildren, which are very proud and um, happy to have that part of our life to balance. Um, I'm a member of the Shinnecock tribe in New York and um, really wanted to stay east to do my public health training and I uh, lost, but um, <laughs> it, it was a good thing. It was a good thing for us to come here to California and um, never thought I'd live here, but here I am many years later. Um, to, the, to the faculty um, and the leadership of the public health school, um, the tools that you um, have given us to allow us to think in a certain way, frame um, what, what comes up that you never knew was going to, um, you'd have to deal with in a community setting um, has really allowed me personally working, obviously with this incredible man that I'm 
told me to come to California, um, has allowed me to do things that I never thought I would do. Um, I love to learn. I um, continue to um, be frustrated sometimes, but never bored. To the students, um, to be open to what's ahead, because you don't know what's ahead. Um, the presentation about um, technology, I was afraid to touch a computer. I touched my first computer here at UCLA in 1988. I thought it was going to explode. I thought it was going to horrible things to it. Um, and now I can't imagine life without it. Um, I'm working in an uh, Indian facility where we, Indian health facility in the clinic where we are very much engaged in the electronic record system. Um, can't imagine not having it. We're frustrated when the computer crashes and you gotta go back to paper. Um, but that's a wonderful thing. And now understand about smartphones. I haven't quite touched Facebook, but I know that that's a place that we're going to in terms of communicating health messages, not to just pick on Facebook or any other social media. But understand that that openness is what is going to allow us to move forward. It's going to allow us to um, address a lot of the injustice of what we see. It's going to allow us to um, figure out how we use all these tools to look at health disparities and come up with solutions. There's a concept in um, the ACA that talks about the medical home. And if you think about the picture that was presented of that waiting room, the public health waiting room, with the lady leaning over and women with their kids and um, the medical home concept, I'm so excited to, to be um, part of what I think is changing. If you think about this concept of a home, you know, all those folks sitting in that waiting room should, should be able to know who to call when there's a problem and have people in a, in a team concept to respond to that, not just sitting in a waiting room. And so that concept I'm so excited about and, and hope I get to practice medicine in, in that era because I see it coming and we're trying to implement those very concepts in a very small clinic in an isolated part of Northern California. But that concept is all over the, the country. I hope it's going to be all over the world. So thank you for the tools that you've given me here, including being able to touch the computer. <laughs> PowerPoint, I just thought I'd die learning how to do PowerPoint. Um, but now I can just pump out things, but what a way to communicate the incredible tools of just clicking through a couple things and, and communicating the message. So for the student to just continue to always be open because you do not know what's ahead. I had to give up my brick phone. I had to touch a computer. Um, but there's so much ahead. There's so much that we can do. And, and thank you for my experiences here. Um, you know, uh, policy is not easy, and I think uh, uh, Dr. Tom Breslow used to say that uh, working in community medicine and public health, uh, you really, um, it was a fine dance, and I don't know if he was a good dancer or not, but he wasn't. <laughs> but uh, that's the way he described it, and that always stuck with me, that that's kind of how community medicine works. Uh, I had the fortunate opportunity to uh, live in Los Angeles even before starting school here and working uh, in Compton, um, running a clinic there called the American Indian Free Clinic and also a clinic in Los Angeles at Echo Park. So I had a lot of experience working with the homeless population in Los Angeles County also working with the Winston Street American Indian Crisis Center and providing services there. One of the fortunate things that um, I was able to do was bring public health professionals with me to places where I worked and, and that was a real blessing. I, I remember taking people from Centers for Disease Control and Indian Health Service to these centers and and exposing them to the situations that people were living in. Um, and I thought that was a real good benefit of public health. And speaking of public health advocacy, I think that's the greatest thing that can happen is 
people with public health training going into the communities and providing the uh, advocacy at that level. Um, one of the best opportunities I had was taking Dr. Newman uh, with me to, uh, to my reservation in Northern California. Um, and he was uh, able to sit with our tribal leadership and talk with them directly about health care and public health and what it meant and the importance of it. Um, so that kind of advocacy really has meant a lot to, um, from my perspective of, of what public health is. Well, there's a lot of different things going on that, uh, that are very helpful to promoting the system of public health. And, um, and I, I really think uh, that the future of public health really looks bright. I'm hoping to encourage all of you uh, to move forward in your careers in public health and do the advocacy that is being talked about here today because um, I, I think there's a real opportunity to make um, good progress in the system that exists now. Um, for example, in our system in Northern California, we have one of the better telemedicine programs that we're offering to our population as a way of accessing services to our population. We're providing specialty care services on, at our clinic, pediatrics and uh, psychiatry and telehealth, hepatology and endocrinology. So we're providing the access to those services that were never accessible before to those communities like that. Uh, I know military service has been doing this for years and years with telehealth and doing robotic uh, surgeries and maneuvers with uh, uh, rural or isolated locations. And so some of that technology is starting to turn at least access to care and services around in the, uh, in the rural communities. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife for coming to California and <laughs> doing the public, uh, public health degree here at UCLA. I think uh, uh, we know about um, a lot about John Wooden as a family. Uh, we talk about him often. And uh, um, I just wanted to talk about a little bit about the, the experience I had here working here. Uh, I was the, um, the um, senior um, resident, chief resident of all things, for the preventive medicine program when I was here. I also had the opportunity to work for student health services while I was here. So I would like to thank uh, UCLA for that opportunity as well. Um, I wanted to thank all of my professors. They did a marvelous job. Uh, as far as I was concerned, I think I felt very spiritually connected to all of my professors in public health. I don't know if that was just me or, 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 uh, or a, a connection there. Um, I wanted to particularly honor uh, Dr. Alfred Newman uh, at this time. <laughs> Dr. Newman. Uh, uh, for uh, his encouragement while I was here. And he actually probably was the most influential recruiter uh, for me to come here to public health because uh, we served on some boards together before I actually became a public health person. And he was my uh, mentor to do that. today. Dr. Newman, Charlotte, if you <laughs> Come on up.
This is a tobacco pouch. It's a large <laughs> but it's an art object. <laughs> Thank you. So you can, you can see this is really a celebration of alumni and of all our faculty for what you teach and what you give to the students and alumni once they graduate. So it's now my pleasure for the third inductee to introduce Kristen Kala, who earned her Master's of Public Health and Community Health Sciences from the Fielding School in 1993 and is now the Senior Program Officer at the Trust Fund for Victims, which supports the International Criminal Court in The Hague to restore dignity to more than 100,000 survivors of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Ms. Kala is a critical member of the team that built and now administers the multi-million euro trust fund. She's led human rights and public health efforts in over 25 countries in conflict and post-conflict situations, including the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kosovo, and Rwanda, to assist with moving from relief and emergency efforts to post-conflict and development efforts. She was the first director of HIV AIDS in Atlanta for CARES International Programming Worldwide. She led a $50 million global USAID project in 26 countries at CARE International and was the first chief of HIV AIDS at UNICEF in Ethiopia. She's done and continues to do extraordinary work in public health and has touched many lives. And I think for the students here, you can see we've just got extraordinary alumni changing what's happening in the United States and globally. So please join me in congratulating Kristen Kala. Thank you so much. It's, it's actually quite a pleasure to be here. Um, I don't think I've been at the School of Public Health for about 23 years uh, since the day of graduation. And uh, these days I spend my days in rooms filled with lawyers. Uh, so it is such a pleasure to be here with <laughs> <laughs> practitioners. Um, I'm also quite moved by the students in your presentations and quite excited about the field of public health. Uh, I would encourage you not to forget global health also, uh, and hope that that inspires you. Um, I, I'd like to thank you, uh, the Dean and her staff, and, and certainly the School of Public Health. Um, I'd also like to recognize some of the professors that are in the room uh, that were my teachers. Uh, both Newmans are here, and I'm, I'm so happy to see you. I don't think I've seen you since the day of graduation. Um, and, and of course, I, I'd like to acknowledge the venerable Dr. Joanne Leslie, who is sitting next to me who was a professor here at UCLA and one of my mentors and main, maintained contact with me throughout the years. And I, I thank you so much for your support throughout the years. I'd also like to recognize uh, Nancy um, Ibrahim, who nominated me. And I'm sorry I didn't bring you a gift, but I bring you my love. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, and your career is so inspiring. Uh, the work that you do in downtown and South Central LA, and you have inspired me throughout the years. And, Thank you to you and your family for your love and support. I'm, I'm here with my friends in the back, my LA family, who always provide a compass for me no matter where I am in the world. I always know I can come home to LA. Uh, and thank you, Lisa and Suzanne, for being here. Um, to my loved ones who are not able to be here, including my girlfriend, Bridget, who, who is back in The Hague. Um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a, a very interesting ride, and I never planned to do all of the work that I've been able to do in all of the international institutions I've been able to work in, and there were a lot of firsts. Uh, and I think part of that was great fortune, part of that was wonderful mentors, but I always tell my staff, let the work speak for itself. And I think that's so important. Uh, and let others inspire us as we move along. And I've learned so much from the communities where I have worked. And what I have learned is we have so much in common. It doesn't matter where we are, whether we're here in Los Angeles, whether we are in a village in Tajikistan near the Afghan border, whether we are in Eastern Congo or Rwanda, it, it really makes no difference. Most people wanna wake up in the morning, have safety and security, have a sense of livelihood, have their families be healthy, 
be able to feed their children, be able to get access to health care, uh, and so on. And, and this is universal no matter where we are. And I have learned that here from the School of Public Health. So thank you so much for this opportunity.